Apparently the battle system in Paper Mario games has to change game to game. It's mandatory. The Xbox Series S may have just been confirmed as real. We finally know what the next Rocksteady developed game is, and it's not Superman. And Animal Crossing New Horizons will soon be the greatest selling game of all time in Japan. If you want to win a $50 gaming gift card to your platform of choice, stick around at the end of the video to find out how. Boy, oh boy, Tanabe just keeps doing these interviews and each time we get a new interview, we get something new and interesting to look at with Paper Mario, the Paper Mario series as a whole, not just Origami King. Uh, like he, the game just came out. He's been doing this little, everyone wants to interview with Tanabe like, hey, can you talk shit about Miyamoto over here? Can you say Miyamoto ruined the series over here? But <laughs> I don't know what they're asking him to do, but he's doing these interviews. And this time he hung himself off to dry. Uh, this time he was talking to PC Games, which is a German publication, N never heard of it. Basically, what I'm talking about from what he said in the interview, this is just a snippet of the full interview, but the main thing that we're talking about, the juiciest bit here, was that the battle system in every single Paper Mario game since Sticker Star uh, has, has to be completely revamped, all new. He says it's a necessity. I've got a quote, I'll read it to you. He said, striving to find new and innovative systems is the foundation of the philosophy my team and I are following when developing games. So, as such, I think it's a necessity that the combat system changes in every game. And it's like, Jesus Christ, Tanabe! I thought you were the good guy! I thought you were on our side! I thought you were trying your best! Uh, but you're not. You're like, you know what? That old battle system that you guys like that worked perfectly fine? <laughs> No, no. So we're tell you're telling me we get 10 more Paper Mario games each time you're going to innovate the battle system and change it completely because you go, it has to be. No one likes the same old thing. Excuse me, Tanabe, let me just redirect you to the sales numbers of 2D Mario games that are literally just pop boop beep pop boop pop beep boop done into the They sell fucking millions. A lot more than your goddamn Paper Mario, that's for sure. People like consistency in their game. They don't like stale old things. You change it up a little bit, but we like consistency, okay? A lot of people like the battle system for Paper Mario Origami King. Uh, I'm kind of right in the middle. I mean, sometimes it's fun. When you get the puzzle right, you're like, ooh, I got the puzzle right, hey, great. But when you get it wrong, you're just like, God, I'm a fucking idiot. This is a game for five-year-olds and I can't solve the puzzle. The, game, the puzzles get harder and harder as you go on in the game. You have to switch the enemies around and line them up and everything. And what I'm talking about puzzles, if you never play the game, is a puzzle battle system where you have to line up the enemies. Anyways, it's an okay battle system. It's not great. You're just The whole thing about the game is you're not incentivized, incentivized to battle. If you got experience points and all that stuff and everything, I would be more happy with the battle system, but I just don't really care about battling that much. The original games had a turn-based battle system, classic JRPG style. Uh, they, they're kind of like a sequel to the Mar Super Mario RPG on Super Nintendo, but obviously with all new characters and new world and everything, blah, 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 developed by a different team, but they're spiritual successors to that, basically. And that, that was a turn-based JRPG. Those were turn-based JRPGs, Mario 60, Paper Mario 64, and Thousand Year Door. Uh, and then they just started innovating on it. And ever since Sticker Star, he said, well, we got to do a new battle system every fucking time. And it's like, have you ever heard of it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. People like this. People like turn-based battle systems in RPGs. That's why there's a fucking million RPGs that come out every year with turn-based battle systems because people fucking like it. Look at Pokemon Tanabe! That's uh, that's one of the greatest selling video game franchises of all time franchises of all time. It they, they're the biggest selling media franchise of all time. Look at their battle system. Hello, it's a turn-based JRPG. What the fuck are you doing? I'm kind of fumbling words here, but you know what I'm saying. So it's a little disheartening to to hear this from Tanabe. I was really rooting for him. He seemed like he was like, "We're trying our best over here, but Miyamoto's holding us down." That's what I that's what I got. And then he comes out and says, "I want to make a brand new battle system every time." I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> cool, cute, awesome." There you go. Just something to be disappointed with Tanabe. Something interesting to note about the Paper Mario series, uh, and also sad and disheartening. So there you go. And I'll say, oh my god, you complain about Paper Mario again, Sean? Get the hell out of here then! And we may have just gotten the Xbox Series S confirmed. It's been a rumor for a long time. Obviously, it's fucking coming. We had the Xbox One S. Why are they not going to bring that same thing over into the next generation, especially if we can get it out earlier where people could decide, oh, because most people already had an Xbox and like they're not jumping in like, oh, it's cheaper. I'm finally going to get an Xbox One S. Uh, you probably didn't see that many sales from the Xbox One S. But when you get when you have the digital and the physical versions available at launch or around launch or within the first year, that is going to generate some sales for the One S, especially like $100 cheaper or however much cheaper it will be. But, obviously it's coming, yes it's coming, but uh, this was leaked with some weird Arabic 
Twitter account. I don't know. Everyone was sharing around this like tweak with all this Arabic all over it. And it was really weird. And I was just like, I don't know. I was like, what the fuck? How, why does it, where did, who, ha what happened? It was a, it's an Xbox One S uh, controller or it's an Xbox One X controller. And on the side of the box, it has the compatibility. It says Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, Xbox One, which is great. So it's backwards compatible. There you go. Uh, PC, iOS, Android. So you have one controller. You can go ahead and throw away your Xbox One controller, throw it right in the trash and play with a new weird D-pad that they have. Uh, but that is good that it's backwards. It's all forward. It's uh, compatible all over the fucking place. That's great. You don't have to disconnect your controller and reconnect your other one for you to play Xbox One, one games. You just go, same controller, baby. So that is great. Very, very good stuff there. Um, and yeah, if we were to believe that this is a legitimate controller, it looks real. It has this D-pad just like in all the pictures. It looks like the real deal thing. If we were to believe the side of the packaging that says Xbox Series S, then boom, there you go. It's fucking confirmed. It's called Robot White, which some people thought was interesting. Like, ooh, Robot White? That's weird. It's just white. It's just a fucking white controller. Don't get wacky with the naming. Go, ooh, Robot White. Ha ha, cute. Uh, sure, whatever, Microsoft. But there you go. Xbox Series S confirmed. And the next Rocksteady game was finally announced. We have been waiting five years for this. Apparently, I haven't been waiting five years. The, the Batman Arkham games are really, really good. Some of the best video games of uh, the last two generations, for sure, easily. They are so goddamn good. Uh, so I'm very excited to check this out, but it is uh, Suicide Squad. It's Suicide Squad. Uh, people have thought for a long time, because Rock, Rocksteady's been saying, we're working on something, we're working on something. And I've just been like, okay, well, I'll wait when you're done. And everyone else was like, this is Superman. Uh, <laughs> people, everyone thought it was Superman. Uh, and the, it was great because the way they teased this, there's an announcement, and they haven't announced anything except for the game. But they put a picture up on Twitter, and it's a picture of Superman with a little uh, bullseye on him that says Suicide Squad, like a, a reticle or whatever the fuck. I don't know what you want to call it. And then it says... Target locked DC Fandome August 22nd Suicide Squad game. And that's it. So they said, guys, Suicide Squad game coming. I hope it's cool. I hope we get to play as uh, the Joker or at least see a lot of the Joker. Obviously, that's everyone's favorite Batman villain. I hope he's involved in some way. Don't go, oh, he's dead. Remember the old Batman games? The, this is connected to that, which it may be, which is fine. It'd be kind of cool if they had the continuous universe. But if it was like just a fresh restart and a new Batman and new everything, hope the Joker plays some type of awesome role in there because I love me some Joker. And Animal Crossing New Horizons. We knew it's selling well. We know. But God damn it, it's about to be the number one best-selling game, video game, skew in Japan ever, on any platform ever. The number one spot currently belongs to Pokemon Red, Blue, Green, uh, and they are at 10.2 million. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons has been out for four months, and it is at 7.5 million uh, just past Pokemon Gold and Silver. Uh, in terms of sales. So there you go. That's amazing. That's fucking ridiculous. Nintendo's 2020 has been incredibly lackluster, regardless of if you want to be a simp for them or not. It's just the facts. I know you want to go, no, -uh, it was really good, Sean. Uh, cute. All right, Timmy. Great. Go to bed. Uh, but I think, and a lot of people think, and I think it's could be factually proven if we look at the, the release schedule for past years and whatever, that it was a week 2020. Uh, but Animal Crossing has really just done it this year for Nintendo. I think they're fine. I think they maybe had more that they were going to like maybe try to rush out and push out a little faster than need be because like, oh fuck, we don't got games. But then Animal Crossing just keeps fucking selling like gangbusters, baby. Uh, so I don't think they're worried about pushing more games out this year. We got the Pikmin 3 Deluxe annou announcement for late October. There's not going to be anything coming before then, I feel like, or else we would have gotten that announced before Pikmin 3, right? I think because they announced Paper Mario Origami King two months before, and they're like, two months later, boom, there it is. No announcements, nothing. Pikmin two months before, then I guess I'm assuming two months later, and then a little bit later, we're going to go, oh, here's your holiday game, maybe. We might get a decent holiday, holiday game. We might not even. We, they might still be banking on Paper Mario and Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is going to sell out the ass. Uh, this holiday season regardless of if you bought it or not there's gonna be a lot of timmies out there getting it uh so i guess good on nintendo not cool for us consumers that want something more than animal crossing but i like to see the big end winning i, I truly do uh, even though i give them a lot of, a heck of a hard time they got a special place in my heart forever okay so tip of the cap to you big end you really nailed it with animal crossing it sold more than the entire metroid franchise combined so, I mean, there you go. You're like, Metroid Prime 4 holiday title. This is sold more than the entire series, all right? This is fucking insane. For until they've made billions of dollars uh, this year, and uh, we've been in the middle of a pandemic. So pretty incredible stuff. There you go, Nintendo. Congratulations.
But if you want to win one of four gift cards, $50 to your platform of choice, PlayStation, Xbox, Steam, and Switch, whatever you want, 3DS, Nintendo in general, uh, all you gotta do is leave a, a like and a comment on the video. I'll be picking a random uh, video uploaded in the month of July, and then two random comments from that random video live on twitch.tv slash fugamecrew. I'll be picking the winners live. I'll be giving two away on YouTube and two away on Twitch. If you're in the live stream at the end of the month, you'll have a chance to win a gift card there, which will be a lot better chance because there's only about 100 people in there when I do the giveaways. So tune in for that and you have a, a good chance to win a gift card there or get those comments in on all the videos uploaded in the month of August. Did I say July earlier? I meant August. Sorry if I said July. Uh, all the videos uploaded in August for chances to win there. And I'll see you at the end of the month. Ha <laughs> ha. If you want to look like this badass on screen right here, hit from our store, fvgamecrew.bigcartel.com. we got shirts, stickers, mugs, all that fun stuff. Good quality, fast shipping, good pricing. We're also on Patreon, patreon.com. slash For those a dollar a month, you can support us over there. really helps out a lot. We also have a join button down below where you can support us like Patreon through YouTube. It's like $5 a month or whatever the case may be. You get a cool little badge next to your name that changes along you're going to support the channel and emotes to use whenever we live stream on YouTube. Uh, links to everything are in the description, including my channel. Cameron's personal channel is down there as well. Uh, we're also on BitChute and Blair. Go check us out over there, and I'll see you later. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support. Bad.